student, I will be enrolling in the optometry program this upcoming fall. And as you've already seen by the title of this video, I will be sharing some of my tips and experience uh, advice in writing the optometry admission test. However, I find that these little advices can also be um, applied towards other tests, other big exams too that you may be taking for other professional programs where, or which covers a lot of topics that um, have a lot of details under each category. So yeah, let's dive in. Alright, so the very first tip is you know why you're actually writing the exam itself. Do Are you willing to commit the time, the energy, the efforts, all that money and resources into writing this long exam that can cost you a lot of money? It would be something worthwhile to think into because it's the be all end all of your test essentially. So make sure you have a good reason on to why you're committing yourself to perhaps for minimum or for an average human, I think. For me personally, it took, it was about six months in the making, but for some people, it may be shorter, it may be longer. So ask yourself if you're willing to use all those times uh, in order to commit to writing your exam. And the second tip is to first plan your dates. Also be wise about choosing when you're actually writing your exam. For some people, you might not have a choice. Uh, I know that for dental exams, they are already pre-scheduled to be twice a year. So unfortunately, sometimes this may not be applicable to you, but for other exams like the MCAT or the OOT, you do have the freedom to write in the summer, write it at your leisure anytime you want. So this one, you can be smart about it. You can choose when you have plenty of time to review beforehand, when you're not under the stress of other midterms, other exams, or taking care of um, other course load that you may be taking in school. So it's, this is when, again, it's really, important to know, it's really important to know your learning style, to know your study skills, and to know how much of the test you're preparing to commit yourself to. And third is prioritize. So now that you've decided to write the test, or in this case, the OAT, really look at the test structure. You know what's going to be on it. You know that there's the survey of natural sciences section with biology, chemistry, organic chemistry. There's also the reading comprehension, the physics, and the quantitative reasoning. But for other types of tests, like the DAT, of course, you'll have different topics. You, you have the same survey of natural sciences, but in different countries. I know that in Canada, there's no organic chemistry, but all this can of course change in the future. So, but my point is to know what's on your exam. And for certain books, certain prep books, for example, I use the Kaplan OAT book. I have my little trusty notes here. But for some, I use the Kaplan OAT book. In the very first few pages, you see the pie chart of the breakdown of what's going to be on the OAT and how much um, of it is going to be focused on the test how much you should really focus on studying for each topic. For instance, in biology, you'll have cell and molecular biology. That will be 32.5% of the biology section of your three survey of natural sciences. Your anatomy and physiology will compose 22.5% of the questions in that biology section, while only the diversity of life sections, only 7.5%. So this one is smart to really prioritize your time, most of your time in studying, reviewing, trying to remember the concepts for biology in the cell and molecular, cellular and molecular biology or the anatomy and physiology, as well as other larger sections compared to diversity of life. And I remember for chemistry, the pie charts were spread out rather evenly, so that was a section where it was good to practice, 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 everything. But for organic chemistry, of course, the reactions make up the bulk of it. And I remember searching up uh, what to focus on for physics, and of course, true to the pie chart, most of it is kinematics, and with some other focus on electromagnetics, electro, electrostatics and magnetism. And yeah, so know your enemy, know where to tackle, and work down accordingly. And tip number four would be to practice, practice, practice. And like the little disclaimer I put out before, everyone's learning styles is different. Everyone's uh, approach to taking the test is going to be different. So first plan your schedule accordingly and know what works for you. For example, for me, I use this little black agenda. My notes are all rather spread out here, but for example, Wow, just over a year ago, on June 9th, I wrote down my little notes on my schedule of what to tackle each day. For example, today or this day was tackling.
sampling so don't chem questions and organic chemistry questions and of course also be realistic too on what you can accomplish on each day you know to that like school work of course and like everything you do in life plan for emergency times in the times where you might get you plan for breaks, you plan for the times when you may have to do an emergency grocery run, you may have to do other things to take your mind off for a bit, account for breaks. So, but I also find that it's nice to color code a little bit too, and in that way, when you're just flipping through your journal and see in the past what you've studied in the past, you can see, okay, how much of each topic have I already covered and which topic may be your weaknesses and which may, maybe you're lacking. Because that's what I find too when you're staying alone or when you're doing things alone, you don't really know what you may be missing. Of course too, while you're practicing, uh, it's good to also note down specific questions that you have uh, gotten wrong or that you missed out on, as well as the relevant concepts and why you got it wrong. And then I find too that it's good to like you know go back to review that and then do it again. Oh, I should also mention too that practices uh, that I mentioned are mostly for the sections that practicing it is essential. For example, the organic chemistry, uh, the general chemistry, the physics, the quantitative reasoning. Pretty much all the other sections apart from biology, which is mainly memorization, as you all know. So I remember back then last year I was googling up on Reddit what other people did in the past and I remember one person on that post which helped me so much was that practice, 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 make sure things become second nature to you. When you're reading up certain questions, even just reading the first sentence, already think, practice forward thinking, already think of what formula you are going to use, already think about what section this is from, thinking back to, um, perhaps if you're a visual learner like me, thinking back to your notes, thinking back to where you remember reading that theory from. And overall, I find that the more you use it, like any other skills in life, the better you are gonna get at it. So yeah, it's just all practice, 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 and knowing your schedule. Be realistic, being self-aware, know how much you can accomplish, know your weaknesses, know your strength. I also want to give a quick tip too. So it's important to, with a week before, to really, before you head into the big test, a week before, five days before, if you have time, simulate the testing uh, conditions. This is a tip from Jane and JD too, by the way. So thank you so much guys for this amazing tip. But uh, this is the time to, if you're already studying in the library, great, perfect. This is time for you to practice taking the test in a quiet setting that is similar to test position. So for example, I went to my local, my local, my local, my university library and to sit down, pull up my test. For, for me, I used to crack the OAT, which comes with the practice test and it simulates real time, um, real time tests. So that really uh, allowed me to test myself, see if I have enough time realistically to go over each section in that time before the exam. Make sure you're not at home because at home everything's familiar. You don't have other people that you need to be, you're not aware of your surroundings pretty much. But in the quiet library you have to be quiet, you have to be aware, you have to be self-aware of your surroundings and I find that practicing something that is similar to the test on that big day will really help me get over my anxiety and when I'm not anxious and when I'm not stressed I tend to think better like other people so consider doing that too for your big day. Now we're gonna move on to the day before. So this is the day where you can really relax, you know, you've already done all you can to get to this moment and it's about to be over, so good job. And I know that in my experience, that I already put on all my time, I already put in all the efforts. I know that with all that, I can, I should be rest assured. It wouldn't do me any good to stress over it and try to cram in anything last minute, but unless, you do have other things that bug you. I do find it's good to just read over your notes a little bit, but don't do it like your life depends on it. You to stay to relax, to um, think clearly, to enjoy the view if you're going to take your test in another city. Take the day to really um, prepare for the next day. Set your alarm, get your breakfast for the next day, pack your dinner maybe tonight. Just take the time to appreciate and get ready for all the free time and the celebration if you're celebrating after you've done your OAT. That's pretty much my advice and experiences in writing the OAT. I know that it's rather short and sweet, but I will be, if I do come up with any other tips and tricks, I will 
post a second video or I will come up with a second video that will add on to this. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, let me know and ask me. And I would be happy to help out. But I just really want you guys to know that the real test, like all other tests perhaps, or maybe just the OAT actually, but in comparison for this specific instance, I find that the actual test was much easier than the practice test and the practice exams than the other exams. For all of you guys who were stressing like me, who were feeling anxious and lost like me back last year, know that all the times and the efforts you put in will pay off and you've already did your best. Do your best and don't worry about the rest. I And that's a quote, I think, from a cartoon character, so... Uh, I hope this doesn't get copyrighted. <laughs> no, but yeah, so I... But back to the main point, I want you guys to know that you will do great no matter what and be prepared to celebrate the end of it or if you don't have time to celebrate the end of it like unlike me like me who had to brush off after the OAT to finish my lab report for the next day you can take the time to enjoy it or you can throw yourself back to another grind and keep going and you can enjoy it another time like during the summer so yeah hang in there guys and I'll see you soon in another video thank you for watching I'd just like to pop in and give a little um, thank you to uh, all the other optometry students, dental students, medical students, residents, people, YouTubers, <laughs> friends, families, and who have really helped me by sharing their stories, their tips, their tricks, and their advice, and going through these professional schools, and uh, I was first sharing me these advices and helping me compile together these videos together. And especially to Sincerely Ray as well, her videos about the optometry school experience has really helped me in the past year. I was trying to study and go through the whole application process. So thank you so much to everyone. And I would also like to give a little disclaimer too on the fact that everyone learns differently, everyone has different plans, different goals, different circumstances. It's not a one plan fits all. This is just the very general realistic tips that have helped me in the past year years and I'm hoping that they can um, you know be applied to other people's lives other people's study schedule and also help them as well so know what works best for you and thank you so much for watching and good luck to you thank you